You guessed it. Last episode, we showed you this sandy football pitch, and we were here for my son's first ever game. Yes, that's right. He hopefully is going to be following in my footsteps. He just wrapped things up, and safe to say he's got some work to do, but he's very, very young, and here's hoping in the next few years he can sign with a big academy and one day become the next Rafael Ruiz, follow my footsteps, become a legend just like I was. And this is a question that some of you have been asking for a long time. What is the actual name of my son? Well, you know, he's part Italian, part Portuguese. I'm from Portugal. My girlfriend was from Italy. So he has more of an Italian name, Marco Raul Ruiz. And if he does become big one day, that is a name you are going to remember. But He's got a long ways to go, boys. He's just starting things out. And for us, we're back into action. You just saw that graphic right there. Unfortunately, we got knocked out in a simulation against Chelsea in the FA Cup. And we're here to get some sweet revenge against them. I told you this year, since we weren't playing in the Champions League, my goal was to focus on the Prem, obviously, but then go for the FA Cup. And that did not happen. We got knocked out early. Here we go. Time for some revenge. Arsenal, Chelsea, another London Derby match. Let's get in to this game. And as we get into this one, I want to give a little bit more backstory on the son of Rafael Ruiz because he's going to be included a lot more in the storyline. So many people before were like, yo, where's your son? Why isn't he in the storylines? First off, I didn't want to put him in the first few years because he would have just been a baby, man. And of course, there's no baby characters that you can use in GTA which of course is the game I use for the storyline. So we couldn't put him in there. And now that he's starting to get older, I've actually finally found a way to get a child character in GTA. I know he doesn't really look like his father, doesn't really look like Rafael Ruiz, but it's the best we're gonna be able to get right now. So just bear with me, boys. That is what we have to work with as we score this right here. A mistake from the Chelsea goalkeeper gives Arsenal the one nil lead. Let's get one more look, pass back right here. Keeper takes a terrible touch. Oh my God, what was that? It goes in, it's one nil. Arsenal take the lead going into the halftime break. But yeah, that's the best we're gonna get right now for the child of Rafael Ruiz. I hope to include him in a lot more storylines for this my player and hope that's something you guys are gonna be enjoying because I know a lot of people have been asking for storylines involving him, so they are coming and it should be good for as of right now i know i always talk about ending the year with a goalkeeper career mode but right now i low-key love this rafael ruiz career mode so much and we may just do this throughout the entirety of fifa could you imagine how sweet that would be too if we could complete an entire series from start to finish in fifa with rafael ruiz we have so many more seasons left to go we could actually finish a my player career mode playing every season with storylines and by the end of it who knows we could progress into fifa 21 and carry over with rafael ruiz's son as our player we'll see though a lot of time remaining that is the goal though and that's what i'm hoping to do unless things die out and you guys want to see a new my player let's continue in this game 85th minute a chance for chelsea to equalize and it's leno coming up with a game saving save right here 1-0 is going to be the final score. A lot of people were saying, yo, why is Leno, why has he not left the team? If you watched last episode, it was transfer window deadline day. Leno was said to have been sold. The reason being is because he was signed on pre-contract. So he will be at Arsenal for the remainder of the season. And the next season, whoever he signed with on pre-contract, he will be joining them. Huge win, 1-0, taking down Chelsea after, of course, they beat us in the FA Cup. And... It's back to work, but before our next training session, I'm hanging out with one of my teammates who, as you guys know, we've had some discrepancies. The fight we got into a few episodes back, last episode, I said my apologies to him. He said his sorry as well. And now, ever since that, we've started to bond a little bit more. And it's crazy. We've actually become good friends. We headed out for a, a, a coffee break for training, and we've just been talking and... Yo, we're becoming great friends. He's been telling me the great spots to go to in London as, of course, I'm new to this city. And I think it could be the beginning of a long friendship with my teammate right here. The teammate specifically I'm referring to, 
is the boy Pepe, of course, Arsenal player. And again, just bear with me, Pepe. It is almost impossible to get his actual face into GTA. So we're just going to pretend that's Pepe. Obviously, we do the same with Joao Felix, another one of the players that we use in this career mode. It's funny, right? Because the way GTA works, I can get like, you've seen Messi in some of the storylines. I've been able to get Messi, but a lot of the other less known players you can't really get in. From all that I've seen, the only players that you can like actually get into GTA off the top of my head are like Ronaldo, Messi, Benzema for whatever reason. I think you can get Neymar and Pogba too, and there may be a few others. Let's just get into this game. And yeah, enough of me ranting on about GTA. I don't know. Do you guys like to hear some of that like background story stuff involved, like involving how I make this series? It's actually crazy. The process that goes into making each my player episode. These things you wouldn't believe, man. People ask me to post multiple of these every single day. The reason why I think you guys are enjoying this series so much is because I'm putting so much more eff much effort into them. They take so much longer to make. I'm posting two a week because that's about all I can do. They take so long to make, coming up with storyline ideas, putting them together, recording them. You wouldn't believe it, man. It's crazy. That's why I can't post these more often. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I know you love them so much, but two episodes a week is um, all you guys are going to get for now every Tuesday and Friday. All right, enough of me ranting again. Let's ba get back into the game. Pepe with a dangerous slide tackle right there will lead to a free kick for Manchester United. This is a big game for both teams fighting for those, uh, well, Man United fighting for a top uh, spot in the top four while we are fighting for a spot literally to win the league. I think we're first right now, so let's keep it that way. Not that great of a first half. Nil-nil, a bit boring, I would say. But 45 minutes left to go. Let's see what we can do here at the Emirates. It's back to work, and it's a steal. It's a dangerous chance. It's Ruiz to Pepe. Let's go, boys. We form in that partnership now. The assist, the 1-0 lead against the United. Let's go. That's what we love to see. Imagine, man, we were literally just duking it out a few episodes ago, throwing hands, fighting, in a freaking parking lot after training and now we're back out here and assist great goal from Pepe I mean we've been doing this all season nothing really changed after the fight as uh, you know when we're just playing the games I'm doing what I need to do to win everyone is off the field things have been shaky it's glad though I'm glad to see that everything is back to normal straight after though it'd be a chance for Manchester United they would get that goal back and late in the game we thought this was going to be it, and it still could be it. 62nd minute equalizing goal. Cross, unmarked man, far post. What's new? I feel like we see this same goal so often in this series. But it is what it is. It's 1-1, and we push forward. Few games remaining in this season, so things are getting tight. Wins are needed for both sides. Like I said, we're fighting for that top spot in the league. I believe our only real competition right now is Man City. So we got to keep up with them. And next episode, I'm telling you this right now, is going to be the final episode of the season. 89th minute, back into the action. And it's Pepe yet again. He barely gets his toe on the ball. And he slots it home. 2-1, game winner. Arsenal going home with three points. Love to see it. There you go. Pepe with two in this one. And that's going to seal the deal. Seal the game. Let's get another look. I mean, look at this, man. Just sliding into the ball. And he actually gets like some curl on this somehow. Put some wicked spin. And it goes around the keeper. David Gea is literally just stunned that that thing found its way into the back of the net. There you go. Yet another win for Arsenal. We could be just well on our way, boys, to the raising the Premier League trophy come the end of this season. Like I said, one more episode left after this for us to be crowned champions. And then it's on to the 2026 World Cup if we get the call up and then we'll be back with Arsenal next year. I have no plans on leaving this club for, I don't know. Like I said, I like staying with the team for at least two seasons to give it more of a realistic feel. This could be the first time we stay at a club for three seasons. Who knows? After training, I had a barbecue. My son was there and I invited over my agent. Now picture this. You guys know who my agent is, obviously. The man right here on the screen right now, Lionel Messi, former teammate at Barcelona. He's retired. He's not my agent. Imagine being my son and being in a position where you get to train at such a young age with your father, who is one of the best players in the world currently, 
and then you get to train with Lionel Messi in the backyard, who is one of the best of all time. I'm telling you, man, he could be well on his way to being one of the next best footballers in the world. He's got a long way to go, but I'll tell you what, when he gets a bit older, every single club is going to want him playing for their youth academy. I am like so excited for the future of this series now that we have this to push on and move forward to not only following this story of Rafael Ruiz playing current first team football for some of the biggest clubs around the world but now we get to follow the story of his son and his rise to fame and it's going to take quite a while because I believe if we're following the storyline how old would his son be I believe he's like three or four years old so like yo he's still like super young it's going to take a while at least like 10 seasons oh wow well who knows we might fast forward in this series a little bit we'll see where it takes us but for now let's just live in the moment stoke city against arsenal a few games remaining so we're playing this one out right here and it's yet another assist man this episode in general i've just been passing first instead of shooting yes i've taken some shots this game but um more than uh, uh more often than shooting this game i have been passing it's a great chip in right there cross Keeper nearly saves it. Wasn't the greatest shot in the world, but it's a goal nonetheless. And it's a 1-0 lead for Arsenal. And things would just pick up and continue from there. At its time, at the end of the first half, we grab yet another. The game, the episode continues with Rafael Ruiz still yet to score a goal. The main goal scorer on this team. And I'm just letting my teammates do all the work. And I think that's one of the things I've been most shocked with this year i would say coming to arsenal the plan was to rebuild this team take them back to glory obviously we're not in the champions league this year that was the main goal the weirdest thing has been coming to this team in seeing how successful my teammates are at arsenal we don't have a lot of high rated players on this club quite frankly compared to barcelona last year we are a terrible team in terms of all of the player ratings on the squad it's been it's just been crazy how well we've done obviously when I'm playing we're gonna get more wins because I'm controlling my player and I am able to have an impact on the game but we simulate more than 75% of the games in this career mode and even when we simulate and I'm not playing I have no control we're getting win after win after win a bit mad we're gonna win ourselves a free kick right here we're already up to nil so any other goals in the second half are gonna be a bit extra I really don't see Stoke coming back in this one and having any chance at all uh, Rafael Ruiz though sent to the spot we just scored our first free kick a few episodes back and could it already be time for us to score a second Beautiful, man. Just beautiful. Second free kick goal of our career. To be honest, too, it's from a very similar spot to where our first free kick was scored. And it's scored in almost the same way. The keeper dives and practically punches it in to his own net. We get credited with the goal. Terrible keeping, though. What else do you expect? Stoke City. No offense to Stoke City fans out there. But their goalkeeper probably isn't the highest of ratings. And it's 3-0. We continue our domination. Stoke would come back, man. They would have some decent chances, and 80th minute right here, yet another one, but Leno on it. We're going to miss him next season as he's leaving on pre-contract, and what is this? 95th minute, last chance of the game, and another free kick. Could we score two free kick goals in one match? Rafael Ruiz, do your thing. Yo, how does that even happen? I missed that chance from what could quite possibly be one of the easiest free kick spots in the world. Literally straight on chance to score. I missed that one. I scored the one from the difficult spot. Whatever, boys. I just put a little bit, a little bit too much power on it. You thought I was about to score two free kick goals in one game. How mad would that have been? Would have been crazy. But I love that we're just getting these opportunities now. And, of course, as we continue this career mode, the free kick goals are only going to continue to pile on. 3-0. What a win. Next day, getting some work done in my office. 
checking the computer and doing some things, some paperwork and whatnot. And I decided to do something I don't normally do. Go on some of the sports media sites. I tend to stay away from that. And that's when I saw this. And if you can't read it, it reads this. Portugal considering ban on Rafael Ruiz after the fight with my Arsenal teammate that happened two episodes ago. Now this is something that would keep me from the 2026 World Cup. Is this true? Is this site full of nonsense? I've yet to hear from my national team yet. But if it is, I could be missing out on the next World Cup. Find out if it's true and find out if we get the call up in the next episode.